hello my dear friends how are you doing today welcome back to the channel in the previous video i mentioned that pip2 ppsk reduces uh, uh, papr and uh, it doesn't contribute to, uh, to the burden of the power amplifier so in this video i will talk in a little more detail way on how pip2 ppsk reduces papr and how it contributes to the relaxed power amplifier design and uh, how, how we can enhance the cell coverage so all these three aspects will be covered so for that uh, uh, let me uh, start with the power amplifier and and its uh, input output characteristics so this is the input amplitude output amplitude and this is the linear region of the power amplifier and this is the non linear region of the power amplifier let's say this is the maximum input uh, um, value after which uh, the power amplifier goes to non linear region so to talk about the papr um reduction in case of pib2 bpsk uh, first we need to see what happens in case of bpsk system all right so i have considered the equation um, which is taken from the 3gpp according to this uh, if we draw the constellation it will look like this all right so let's say the simple transitions uh, for a bpsk system are like this x1 x2 x2 x1 like that okay now whenever the signal transition happens from x1 to x2 you see that uh, the signal trajectory goes like this and um, as a result of which uh, the signal uh, is uh, actually crossing the origin here basically we need to see what are the effects if the uh, signal crosses the origin the first thing is that uh, um, the carrier amplitude will become zero for a moment okay the the other thing is um the distance between the x1 and x2 is large and 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 as a result of which um there is a large amplitude variation seen in case of signal trajectory so this uh, this is not true for all the simple transitions let's say if you go from x2 to x2 like uh, you will be remaining in the same position as well so there is no amplitude variation here at all uh, but again when you move from x2 to x1 again you will traverse back from x2 to x1 and as a result of which again there is a large amplitude variation so what is the problem with this the thing is um we talk about papr right papr is peak to average power ratio but what does it talk about it talk about the swing of peak power with respect to average power which means it basically talks about uh, the variations in the amplitude uh, amplitude of the signal so larger the variations in the amplitude of the signal the papr is higher and uh, the, the smaller the amplitude variations the papr is lower okay so here we are telling that uh, the amplitude variations are large but uh, really we need to see uh, by comparing it with the pi2 bpsk so now let us consider pi2 bpsk and this is the equation which is used in in 3gpp spec and according to this spec if you draw the constellation if it if you consider the even symbols um, then your constellation would look like this all right so let but uh, for hot symbols here yeah, the constellation would look like this but uh, if we combine both of them like if after applying this equation uh, the output of uh, uh, this equation if you plot the constellation you will see that uh, uh, the constellation would look like this okay so this is x1 x4 x2 x3 now let us consider that we are at a symbol uh, x1 so now the second symbol would be uh, you know the, the hard or symbol so here the symbol could be x3 or x4 right as per this constellation so when you are in x1 the transition happens like this or like this okay now the the next one is uh, uh, e1 uh, so here the symbol transition can happen to either x1 or x2 so let's say we are in x3 and if it happens to x1 this is a symbol transition or the symbol transition can happen here or let's say we are in x4 and the symbol transition can happen in this direction or it can happen in this direction so basically if you see this constellation and symbol transition the symbol transition always happen uh, um, along these lines and there is no symbol transition happening uh, via origin as a result of which we can say that uh, the carrier amplitude doesn't go to zero and also um, 
and also the distance between an x1 and x4 or x1 and x3 is much lesser when uh, smaller when compared to the distance between x1 and x2 as a result of which the signal amplitude uh, variations are lesser here and and as a result of which uh, the PIPR is low okay so that's how the pi by 2 bpsk uh, uh, is aimed to uh, or designed to reduce uh, the papr so we could only analyze this with uh, um, the simple uh, transitions and how with the simple transitions the amplitude variations are getting reduced now we will move on to the amplifier design aspect so as we have seen uh, the input output characteristics let's say uh, you know this is the point the max input uh, amplitude for which um, after which uh, the amplifier will go to nonlinear region now let's say uh, you know this is the point where your bpsk the amplitude variations for bpsk signal lies okay so let's say this is the bpsk one so let, now let us consider the uh, pi by 2 bpsk so in case of pi by 2 bpsk what happens uh, since the signal amplitude variations are less the the range of input would be falling under uh, under this region okay so since only this much uh, uh, input range is required if you clearly see uh, uh, you know we can design a very relaxed power amplifier so, so for example our my power amplifier could be just something like this so a low cost um, and less design constraint to power amplifier uh, can be designed here and and in other words we can say a, a relaxed power amplifier design can be um, designed so now but let's say we have the luxury to actually uh, you know uh, go for or offered a such a kind of uh, more linear uh, power amplifier then what is the advantage the advantage is that if you clearly see uh, there is a room le left over here so there is a room left to further increase the uh, input power or input amplitude so if you increase uh, the input amplitude which means we can transmit the signal uh, to a longer distance so pi by 2 bpsk actually enhances the cell coverage area um, by giving the opportunity to actually increase the input to power uh, without saturating the power amplifier so that is the advantage of pi by 2 bpsk as it ends uh, you know if, if you consider the uh, cell edge scenario where your uv is at the uh, cell edge uh, and uh, the the uv if uv wants to transmit the signal to the base station then um, it requires more power to transmit so in case of non bpsk system if you try to pump in with more input power uh, then it will cross uh, the max maximum input to, um, power or input amplitude required and it will exercise the nonlinearity but in case of pi by 2 bpsk we can still pump in with extra power um, so that uh, it doesn't exercise the nonlinearity of the power amplifier and as a result of which uh, we can transmit uh, the signal for a longer distance and hence uh, it enhances the cell coverage i hope uh, uh, all the three things are very clear so finally i want to mention uh, uh, one main aspect uh, uh, that is uh, in the history or in our earlier generations there were many such modulation schemes that have that have been proposed uh, you can uh, have a look at it one is uh, OQPSK which is offset QPSK and um, another one is a pi by 4 uh, differential uh, uh, QPSK and I have come across uh, pi by 3 pi by 8 uh, 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 8 array 8 array PSK so all these all these modulation schemes are designed such a way that uh, um, the simple transitions uh, uh, never go to origin as a result of which the signal amplitude variations are uh, less and uh, they will be uh, aimed to aim to uh, produce a less complex uh, uh, power amplifier design so i hope all the things are clear uh, thank you very much uh, have a great day bye bye take care